Up next, we have Stephen Doc Hunsley, who I get the pleasure of working with every day. He's the executive director and founder of SOAR Special Needs, which is based out of Kansas City. It uh, currently serves over 1,000 individuals with disabilities, and um, we have regular respite events and summer day camps. We also are assisting over 400 churches locally, nationally, and globally in starting disability ministry. Doc also organizes the Wonderfully Made Disability Conference, which is an annual disability ministry conference every October in Kansas City. He is a retired pediatrician, and his wife Kay continues to be practicing medicine. Um, they are proud parents to three beautiful children, Luke, Mark, and Sarah. The Hunsley's middle child, Mark, is Presently running the halls of heaven, during Mark's five-year earthly stay, he gave his family the opportunity to learn from and love a child with autism. Today, Doc is speaking on myth-busting, um, how to get senior leadership on board with disability ministry. Please welcome Doc Hensley. All right, well, thank you. Uh, it's my honor to be here today. Uh, this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, as Elizabeth said, you know, we're going to be talking about myth busting today. Everyone has myths on why senior leadership can't do it. And senior leadership have those myths on why you can't do disability ministry. So we're going to talk about some of those today. As Elizabeth said, I'm uh, the executive director and founder of SOAR Special Needs. Uh, we transform the lives of special families and empower them to soar in the local and faith communities. And we would love to come alongside any church to help you do disability ministry or take what you already have and take it to the next level. We can help with camps, with respite, you name it, we can help you. When we can even help you talk to your senior leadership. Why do I do what I do? As she said, my inspiration is my son, Mark, also known as Bubba, my mini me. And he was diagnosed with Dravet syndrome a very rare genetic seizure disorder and autism. And 11 years ago, he was cured of that when he was born into heaven. And through that whole process, he gave me a whole new passion for individuals with disabilities. I've now worked at two churches. Uh, at one is a children's pastor, one is a special needs disability pastor. And the first church is a children's pastor. I wanted to start a disability ministry where the senior pastor said, no, we don't want those kind of people here. Eventually, I was able to do a disability ministry. And then at my other church, I started SOAR. And we started with three individuals. And over the next eight years, we grew it to serve over 800 individuals with disabilities on three campuses. That's the power of recruiting volunteers, just like Clarence talked about in storytelling. But it's also the difference between having senior leadership who believes in it versus senior leadership who doesn't. So let me talk about a couple things first. I want to talk about pastoral care ministry versus disability ministry. Now, just about every church I know has a pastoral care ministry. And what is that? It's a care ministry that's only for adults, and it usually includes benevolence, counseling, hospital visits, nursing home visits, weddings and funerals, prayer teams, support teams. These are all things that just about every church does. Well, now let's talk about disability ministry. This is for children and adults, and very few ch churches do it. It's buddies on the weekend surface. It's family support groups, respite care, missions trips, um, camps, Bible studies, and small groups. Well, why is there the difference between the two? Well, you know, a couple things. 90% of all individuals with disabilities and their families don't attend church today. 90%. It is the largest unmet people group in the United States, and we don't realize it. There's three main reasons that they don't go to church. One, they're afraid the church isn't prepared to take care of their child, and that's largely true. We'll get to that in a minute. Second, they know what a burden their child is, so they don't want to be a burden to the church. Or three, the one that breaks my heart, they've been asked to leave the church too many times, and they don't want to be asked to leave again. So they don't even go. Why is it important? It is estimated that 11% of evangelical churches in the United States today have an active disability ministry and can welcome families. What that means is 89% of churches today turn families away or cannot welcome them. I'm sorry, that is not acceptable. 
and it's unbiblical. And we cannot stand for that. And we need to come together as the Big C Church to change that. So let's talk about some statistics. First off, latest numbers show that one out of every six kids in the United States today have a disability. That's 17.5%. And actually, I'm hearing the new numbers are getting ready to come out from the CDC showing it'll be at least one out of every five, if not one out of every four kids today. So it's going to be at least 20%. At the same time, one out of every four adults today are affected with some form of disability. And autism now is one out of every 48 births. And so it's all around us. The divorce rate for families with disabilities is estimated to be around 90%. And if they have medical issues, it jumps to 95%. And so why parenting a child with special needs is a 24-7, 365 day stressful job. And there is no break. And the church needs to be a place of refuge to come alongside for that. On top of that, you have hidden disabilities where for every one person you see with a disability, there's another four who have a hidden disability you wouldn't even know. That includes psychiatric diagnoses, traumatic brain injury, epilepsy, and so on and so forth with it. So now let's talk about including individuals with disabilities in the church. So the vast majority of pastors I know want their church to reach people in their communities, and they want to grow. So where is this disconnect when it comes to families with disabilities? My belief is if the pastor hasn't experienced disability through a friend or a family member, then they probably are ignorant to the fact that disability affects every community, all ethnicities, all ages, and all social classes. You see, it's why care ministries exist in every church. Every pastor has had an individual in their family, parent, grandparent, who has needed that ministry. And it's why they don't have a disability ministry, because they've not personally been affected by that. So we now need to see value in disabilities. How can we see value? If your senior leadership sees value in including children, youth, adults, and senior adults, then they should see the value including persons with disabilities, because disability affects every single one of those groups. There is no difference. So I've got a simple question. Why isn't there a massive movement to include people with disabilities in the church? I truly believe that the vast majority of pastors have no idea how to include people with disabilities and their families into the life of the church. And it's simply a lack of understanding and education. You see, God created and welcomes all people into fellowship with him who are we then to discriminate based on someone's ability. And so it's our job to educate the leadership. And we need to continue to see value in disabilities. And to help your senior leadership to see value, one of the, my favorite ways to do that is breaking bread. Invite your senior leadership to have dinner with one of your families, or if you're a family, and have dinner together with your in child or individual with disability. And pray that they have a typical or bad night. Don't ask them to be on their best behavior. You want the senior leadership to see what normal everyday life is about, that they're stripping off their clothes, that they're having issues, because that's what it's like. And then you talk to the senior leadership and let them know, hey, you realize it takes us an hour to get to church every morning? There's no way we can make the 8 a.m. when you're trying to do all the disability service because it takes our family an hour and a half to get ready. They have no idea. But everyone, all his staff is trying to say, yeah, if we do it, we can do it at 8 a.m. because that's when we have the most space available. But they don't know the families. And so that's our job to help educate there. So there are a lot of concerns, myths from ministry. And you can read a bunch of them here. And these are all things I've heard. Well, we don't have anyone with disabilities in our church. We don't need a ministry. Wrong. If you've got more than four adults and you have more than five kids, you have disabilities. Families just don't want to tell you. Um, it's too expensive. We can't do it. Uh, we don't know where to start. It's too hard or scary. Um, what if we mess something up? I'm sorry. If you look at Jesus, his ministry was messy. It was never clean. Ministry is messy. We don't need another ministry. Um, another mi church already does that. 
and so on and so forth. We need volunteers more urgently in other ministries right now. We're a small church. Only big churches need to do that. Wrong. I helped a church of 150 people start a ministry, and now 25% of their church is disabled and has one of the most alive disability ministries in the country. It's amazing. And I've helped churches plant from the beginning with as few as 10 people that have started with a heart for disability. It doesn't take much. And then the old saying, if we start it, they will come, and they just, we just can't handle it. These are all myths, and we're going to break those. But first, let's talk about biblical facts. Biblical facts. 75% of Jesus' miracles were done on those with disabilities when he was here on earth. He healed the lame. He healed the blind. Jesus really was the very first special needs pastor. If we want to be more like Jesus, we will be around those with disabilities as well. Now let's look at one of my favorite passages, Luke, 12, uh, Luke 14, 12 through 14. And it says, then he also said to him who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, you do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the blind, the lame, the maimed, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. You see, what this is doing, we are called to bring those with disabilities into the church. Why? Because the church needs those with disabilities just as much as those with disabilities need the church. It's a biblical commandment. In fact, so important that the very next verse, Jesus gives a command again, two times in a matter of five verses. And it's a great model of inclusion. But Jesus goes on and says, so much that if you do it, you will be blessed. Your church will be blessed. You will miss out. So if your church really wants to be more like Jesus, you will minister to those with disabilities. Um, so going to jump in. What, what is a disability ministry then? You know, a disability ministry exists to impart the word of God in the hearts of all individuals in an engaging and understandable manner and to teach them to love, to know, and to honor God. Basically, it, what it means is the church needs to be a place of refuge for families, with individuals' disabilities where their parents know that their child is loved on. You serve the entire family. It's a relationship. And I'll piggyback on what Clarence said today. I've got one requirement for you to be a volunteer. And I sum it up with exactly what he said, but mine is, can you be a friend? Because if you can be a friend, you can serve. You don't need any experience. That's all it is. So now let's change our objections into objectives. And so let's break some of this down. Senior leadership's usually uncomfortable with the unknown, and so the whole world of special needs is a big unknown, and they don't like that. Even elderly respite care is unknown for many, and it's just that lack of knowledge. And so we've got to change that into objectives. So let's get to a couple of these. Lack of interest in the ministry. Well, it's really due to a lack of understanding. So when we include individuals with special needs into the life of the church, we are showing love and compassion to the unreached people group who are frequently marginalized and misunderstood. And this leads to an engaging and exciting ministry. And having a leader who's passionate and able to share a vision will grow interest in others within and outside the church. Another big myth we have, oh, we just don't have the budget or the money to do a ministry. Ministry is not expensive. You can do an entire disability ministry as little as $250 to $500. It doesn't cost a bunch of money. It's, again, relationship-based. A lot of items can be donated. The best sensory gadgets are McDonald's Happy Meal toys. I'll tell you, every family loves to get those out of the house. They'll give them to you in bags. So just having those conversations. Liability issues for the church. Oh, we can't do it because of liability. Again, ministry is messy. But every, all you do is go in and have an, an action plan on how to avoid any being negligent, decrease your liability. You train your volunteers. We would love to come alongside you, help you with that. You have background checks. Insurance policies usually cover everything without any additional charge. We do large-scale camps, 150 individuals with disabilities, 500 volunteers, and I've never had to pay an extra cent for that at a church because of it. Safety issues for the ministry, we just can't do that. 
you have parents or the guardian fill out a plan of care to explain what's going on with their child so you know everything going on and have that safety there. You talk with the, the team. If you have a runner, you create an elopement plan. Create behavior teams so you can have that all in place so you can go. The other big one, ministry will grow too fast. If they start it, they will come. That's not true. And I should have known that as a parent. If I were a parent and as a parent, I'm not about to go somewhere just because someone says they can do disability. I go somewhere because another family tells me with a child with disability that they're doing it well. So it grows slowly. It doesn't grow overnight. You may say, oh, doc, you went from three to 800. Yeah, that took eight years and it started slow. But then as families talked, it grew really quick. And so it usually takes 18 to 24 months. And here's my favorite myth. Um, the church already has a shortage of volunteers. We can't do it. Well, I'm sorry. Just about every single church I know has the 80-20 rule. 80% of the work is done by 20% of the, of the church body. Well, what that tells me is 80% of the church are sitting out in the pews, and they are nothing but glorified knickknacks collecting dust. They are glorified knickknacks, and we've got to get a new ministry that the Holy Spirit will pour down on them and say, that's it. That is for me. And it may be a disability ministry. Let's knock the dust off of them and light them on fire and give them something else. But don't forget to think outside the box. You have National Honor Society students, college students, SPED teacher, OT, PT. They all need community service hours and so many things to do. Important things to remember, every church is different. Do what's right for you. You don't have to do everything. Do things that are sustainable for your church, of your size and your resources. Find what works for you and do it to the best of your ability. Source Special Needs, we exist to help you. So please feel free to contact us. Like I said, we also host the Wonderfully Made Disability Conference. That's October 19th through the 21st. We have family and ministry tracks. We just opened our, our speaking up for that as well. So if you got questions, please come find me at our table. Uh, there's all my contact. I also have handout with all this information, so please stop by our table. Uh, but don't be afraid. Let's blow up those myths and let's reach our families because the church needs those with disabilities as much as those with disabilities need the church. Thank you.